you know, while it is disappointing to see it slip, you know, we are a bit off. We missed the target, but we're not so far off. It's not going to be like, you know, six months from now or anything like this. So it's a bit disappointing that it missed the release, but we are really close. So this was about three and a half months ago. And while freight elevators, personal hangers, and gear storage are now in the PTU, there was clearly a disconnect between messaging, marketing, and reality for Star Citizen this summer. Does that mean all is lost? No, but it is the same communication issue CIG has struggled with for a long time, and it's a continuation of our recent Star Citizen Summers of Fun. So let's talk about what happened this summer if the game is dying and where it can go from here. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Star Citizen can be an incredibly frustrating project to follow. It always feels like it is on the cusp of a great experience. From joining your friends in ships and just traveling around space to running a small mining expedition on a local moon, it has always succeeded because it offers a unique experience. But those touring trips can oftentimes be ruined by desync or randomly exploding ships, and those mining expeditions ultimately feel pointless when the resources you pull from the ground don't matter to the wider game. This persistent state of almost that Star Citizen holds generally leads to a large number of people, much like myself, who like to talk about the game, its development, and what the next update is looking like, rather than jumping in to actually play it. Obviously, that's not great for a game, but this is also simply not yet a full game as most would think of it. Progression is heavily lacking, stability is more of a polite suggestion than a rule, and current features are built for an environment that just doesn't yet exist, making things a bit confusing for new players. Almost any time somebody asks me if they should play Star Citizen, my answer to them is no. Wait to try a free fly, or follow the development until it looks like the game is in a place you'd actually enjoy. I imagine many of you would agree after the ninth or 10th time randomly blowing up in your hangar, but there are plenty of people who would and do enjoy this experience. As an occasional player of No Man's Sky and a past player of Elite Dangerous, I know that different projects offer different experiences that a small selection of players enjoy. But Star Citizen's development is honestly too expensive to just target a niche of players. It needs to find solid footing and build its reputation to grow a base outside of the nerdiest of space nerds myself included. Now, those people, most of us watching this video probably, who are spectating rather than playing, are familiar with the Star Citizen cycle. I kid you not, this graphic has been around for at least six years and still rings true. An update releases, people get excited, servers slowly become more cumbersome, players get bored and restless, and the excitement fades away. Then the next update starts testing and the excitement comes around again. This is a cycle that has played out quarter after quarter for years. But lately, it has begun to stretch. What we've seen this summer is a combination of, well, it's summer, people are outside, as well as raised expectations due to last year's very hyped CitizenCon, some old scars left over from last summer's absolutely horrid content and news drought, and a unique problem with the new freight and hangar feature changes. These changes can't be understated, they will basically change the entire game in one way or another. Not to the point that you feel like you're playing something different, but in subtle ways that you keep running into as a normal player, and more so in the cataclysmic ways if you're a cargo hauler or a miner. The number of ways this kind of change can break a game that's already broken, I imagine is astounding, and CIG has of course failed to communicate that to us as they've drawn closer to the release of this feature. On top of this, these specific changes were the most exciting part of an update that actually could have been a turning point for Star Citizen's delivery and production. Bringing multiple quality of life changes and some refreshes to systems that are more than 7 years old. Ultimately though, the 3 months since that 3.23 patch landed in players hands has only further cemented to players that things still have not changed, and the poor communication around it all hasn't helped. After multiple messages late last year of many positive changes coming in 2024, it's looking less and less likely that all of those changes will land. About 43% of them have, but the rest of the year is still looking murky, and with something very similar happening over the last two summers, this is becoming a new trend. But that doesn't necessarily mean the game is dying. Remember all those people getting the suggestion to simply follow along? They're still there. Looking at Twitch viewership charts, 
I know, not my favorite metric either, but they provide context when you look at average viewership as opposed to just the peak when major streamers are trying the game out. The first thing you'll notice in this range of four years are the spikes in activity. Generally, these spikes occur during large events in the game, late November with IAE and late May of every year with Invictus Week, as well as late October during CitizenCon. But looking closer, you'll see modest bumps around the same time major patches release. 3.15 in early November of 2021, which brought some significant changes in inventory in the medical system. 3.17.2 at the end of July 2022, which increased the player cap and brought some new locations and a new event. In March of 2023, with 3.18 being a very long-awaited patch, but then unfortunately broke the game for many and led to a lot of people just tuning in on Twitch to experience the game. But expanding that range, you can see that the biggest boost to average viewership ever was during May of 2024, when Alpha 3.23 came out, backed by the hype of 2024's supposed big changes to the game. This showed more average viewership than even the big content creator rush of 2022 in May, which still holds the highest Google Trends interest. This shows just how many people are waiting on the sidelines and looking for Star Citizen to get itself into a better place, but it also shows how short-lived that interest can be when players realize it's still not time. And I do believe if they can actually deliver on these features and not just talk them up, these bumps won't be just bumps, but that's a big if. Overall, going by these statistics, the game has generally stayed the same, if not slightly increased over time in interest in viewership. That on its own may not be great, this is just Twitch viewership but it does show that players are generally keeping interest and waiting for a better time to play, as most, I think, would suggest they do. So, what does this mean for Star Citizen? Well, I believe this game is at a very important point in its development. Squadron 42 is meant to release sometime likely in the next year, Server meshing is supposedly after eight years of waiting coming in the next update, albeit likely in a rudimentary form. CIG themselves have emphasized time and again that they understand players want a more stable and fulfilling experience in the game, not just a place to test the features. And to be quite honest, this cycle is starting to run its course. Not only that, with 3.24 consisting mainly of features delayed from the three months past 3.23 release, the update itself may not be enough to restart that legendary cycle. Extending the current frustration of this summer, many players have with the lack of movement and increasing instability. With investment returns coming due and years of pushing off game-defining features and systems that are finally starting to be implemented, a lot of the talk we've seen over the years will have to materialize over the next six to 12 months. Not necessarily for the game to succeed, but for the level of consistent interest to increase and support the MMO they actually want the game to be. This is a pretty hard place to be in, I think. Star Citizen can't simply bug fix its way to stability. With major features still being added, the game will continue to struggle with balancing the current experience and the game they've promised us over the last 10 years that has to be delivered. While things like the Vulcan API, frame generation, game upscaling like DLSS and FSR, and improved rendering techniques aim to improve our client-side performance, there's a lot of tech debt that needs to be handled once server meshing allows for the developers to start finalizing the network side of this game. Because if there's one thing CIG has proven, it's that they can create cool tech in an incredibly immersive environment. But if they don't use this tech to create an engrossing game that keeps players invested and interested, somebody else may eventually come along to eat their lunch. Nobody really knows if or when all of these tech advancements will start to bring tangible effects, but the clock is truly ticking this year, I believe. If they can deliver what they've discussed, things could go very well, but considering there isn't much for people to play for and the game needs to extend its sphere of interest outside of us obsessive space folk, it needs to deliver an experience that is good enough to change its overall reputation. And that's an uphill battle right now. Game development is obviously not easy, but between the poor expectation setting, the vast timeline we've experienced, and the constant drain on development of Star Citizen that is Squadron 42, CIG has put themselves in a bad spot that needs to be improved with the release of 4.0 and beyond. While the game isn't going down, it's 
ultimately up to Chris Roberts and his management team if they want to build a true space sim experience and explode its player base and popularity, or continue to chase a singular vision, enjoying gradual but maybe unsustainable growth. Now, it is yet to be seen what will happen after 324 releases and if the team can get a grapple on game stability and a 4.0 release this year. But even during these downtimes, there are plenty of ways to play the game outside of just logging in and looking around in confusion as to what you should do, including my own organization, the Garden Interstellar Initiative. Yep, that's right, you caught me. This whole video is just an ad for my org. Join now for free JPEGs, pats on the back for holding the line, and all the starry-eyed support you need to keep playing the game. Okay. No, really. We have a cool group of grounded people who talk about the benefits and pitfalls of this game on Discord, watch the occasional bad movie together, jump into other games like No Man's Sky, Helldivers 2, and others, and just kick back with space nerds to discuss all kinds of topics. The link is down below if you want to join, or you can go to GII.app to sign directly up to the org. But if you're looking for people to play with, we've got you covered with weekly activities and our own in-game progression system. Otherwise, like I said during this video, I would suggest just following along with the development. See what's going on and if it interests you enough to jump in, but ultimately, it's not worth banging your head against a game that's going to keep banging back. Who knows, maybe soon, stability will make things more fun. And if you want to support my work, you can check out our Patreon page or join here on YouTube for exclusive videos every month that actually go in depth on the deeper topics of the development. You get live podcast access, behind the scenes looks, and for some a place on a referral randomizer that uses your referral code in the description of all of our videos. And if you made it this far, I appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next. <laughs>